Trust in the Lord. Will you trust in the Lord uh, until the day that we die? And once we die, that's not the end. It, it's just the beginning. And we serve such a good God. He said, as long as we are dying here in our, this body of ours, that, that, that one day going to have to give away. He said, long way down here, he said, goodness and, and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. And then when your life come to an end, Lord have mercy. There's a place in his house for the believer. And I thank God today. We're here to praise him on today. You know, we received a bad report that all our children got sick on last night, yesterday. All our children. You know, they had a program for the day. Children prepared their speeches. Poor was that they all got sick. God is still in control. But we thank God we did see one kid showed up anyway. And we thank God for he and his, I presume it's his father, that they are present in the house of the Lord. We had plans for next week, uh, and our, our plan was uh, we was going to kick off church on time. And we would probably shorten a few things, maybe cut out a song or two. We were going to keep our eyes on the clock. You know, I'm going to shorten my sermon. And we was planning on getting out by 12.30 on next Sunday because it's Christmas Eve. But if the Lord bless those children to come next week and they want to do whatever they're going to do, we're going to give way for those children. And we'll just deal with time as we see fit. So let's just keep praying, my brother and my sister. I don't know if we know, but sickness is at an all-time high. So we just keep our trust in the Lord. And God, he is still in control. And he's worthy to be praised. I'm always just thankful to be present in the house of the Lord. And at this time, I do want to share with you what the Lord put on my heart on today. And if you would turn with me to the book of St. Luke, uh, chapter 1, verse 26 uh, through verse 35. St. Luke, chapter 1. Verse 26 through verse 35. Amen. Verse 26 says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth yeah. to a virgin exposed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin name was Mary. And the angels came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, mm -hmm. and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and 
bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy things which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Let's go back to verse 28. And the angels came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. And we're going to use for a subject on today, highly favored by God. All right. All right. Yeah. Highly favored by God. And in our scripture reading on today, notice it begins by in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And the first thing I want to deal with today is this six months. What is the meaning of and speaking of those six months? So what we want to do is we want to go back six months. And, and six months before this angel visited Mary, God has sent one of heaven called angels by the name of Gabriel. Yeah. And Gabriel came down to visit, uh, the scripture says, a certain priest yeah. named Zechariah. Yeah. And he come from the family of Abiah. And he also had a wife. Now this Abiah, uh, it was a priestly family. And Zechariah had a wife named Elizabeth. Yeah. Now, she was from the lineage of Aaron. Mm -hmm. and, and with this being said, we find these names that we backed up to talk about them. Uh, uh, they come from a priestly family. Uh, in other words, they, they, they came from a, a lineage of people that was called by God's name. And I want to share, share this with us today. Do, do you know we, the church, are a lineage of people that, that, that are called by God's name? And when God get ready to get something done down here on this earth, he go to the lineage of the people that are called by his name. But, but don't never get lifted up so high in who we are to think that we are the only one that God could use. It's because God can use whosoever he desire to use. Yeah, yeah. And you can't never tell what God would do. Yes, he uses lineage, but every now and then he stepped out of the lineage. Yeah, yeah. And, and who would have ever thought that he would step out of the lineage and deal with a harlot called Har uh, yeah. uh, uh, Rahab yeah. and, and bring her into the fold yeah. and, and use her to glorify his name? Who would ever thought that he would step outside of the lineage and deal with a Moabite woman? Yeah, yeah. When, when Moabites and the Israelites hated each other, yeah. but when God needs somebody, yeah. he'll step outside of the lineage. Yeah. You do know about Ruth, don't you? Yeah. He, he stepped outside and brought her in yeah. and, and, and included her into the royal family. Yeah. But, but the main thing, my brother, it's just blessed yeah. to be favored. By God. Yeah. And if your name is on a church road somewhere, you are highly favored 
by the, but then there's something else go with that. Just your name on the roll is not enough. But because Aaron, I mean, excuse me, Zachariah yeah. and Elizabeth, yeah. according to Luke 1 and 6, yeah. they were both righteous before God. Yeah. And they were walking in all of the commandments and the ordinance of the Lord blameless. And, and you know, this is during a time where God's people had strayed so far away from him. Mm -hmm. So we had closed up heaven for 400 years. Right. Now at this point that we're dealing with now, the window had not been opened yet. That's right. That's right. That's right. But still God finds somebody right. that he could call on. Somebody like Luke 1 and 6 that's righteous in his sight. Yeah. It's one thing to be righteous in the sight of people. Now, that can't get you nowhere. 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 But when everything else is gone bad and God had to close up, there's still somebody righteous yeah. Yeah. in his sight. And according to our lesson, there's still somebody striving to keep all of his commandments and his ordinances. And God can find them being blameless. Mm -hmm. And this couple, uh, we went back six months, they had no child. And the reason they had no children because Elizabeth, uh, she was barren. She wanted a child, uh, but she was barren. And they both were well stricken in age. Let me share this with you. They had been praying to the Lord yeah. because they wanted a child. Yeah. And every now and then we go to God praying about situations. And sometimes it looks like God might not hear your prayer. Yeah. So just keep on waiting on the Lord. Yeah. And every now and then uh, he moves in his own time. But they was on up in age, and an angel showed up on the scene. An angel appeared unto him, Luke 1 and 13. And he said unto Abraham, an old man now, in his way of thinking, I'm too old. I've been praying a long time. God didn't hear my prayer. But never give up on God. So the angel showed up and told him, said, your prayers have been answered. God heard your prayer. Yeah. And, and, and your wife, Elizabeth, she shall bear a son. And, and my brother, my sister, during this time, and, and for these two births that we're going to be dealing with yeah. today, uh -huh. these are some special births. One, one of them, the, the, the father and the mother, they, they, they think that they are a past child buried age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then when the Lord blessed them to have a son, I'm not going to even give you the right to name that son. Right. Right. This is a special event. And when it comes to the naming, I, I'll do it. Because the boy's name is going to mean something. Yeah. And when he's born into this world, yeah. and it says Zachariah, but because of his age, he didn't believe that this was going to happen. Yeah. And, and because of his unbelief, yeah. the scripture said God took away his speech. He, he couldn't even speak because he doubted God. Yeah, that's right. And God said, uh, because of the angel told him, because of your unbelief, yeah. you're going to be dumb and you're going to be speechless. Yes. And, and you're going to remain like this for nine months yeah. <laughs> until his son be born into this world. Well, well. And then when he be born into the world, they're going to try to give him a name. 
in the time to be, for him to be born in this world. Yeah. And they come to you and ask you, what's the name going to be? Yeah. Yeah. Tell them his name is going to be John. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I want you to name him John yeah. is because it's symbolic of God is gracious. Yeah. Do you know today that God is gracious? Yeah. Grace of Jehovah. And this is what took place six months before the same angel showed up to visit with Mary. Yeah. And let me share this with you also. Mary and Elizabeth, they were relatives. Yeah. And the bottom line, Everybody that's involved in these two lessons, Zachariah, Elizabeth, Mary, and Joseph, they all come from the lineage of David. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, if you're part of a church, look back over your lineage. Yeah. We ought to be thankful Thanks. because we are of a lineage. And God, we, he's still acknowledging his lineage. Yes. And I don't care what goes on in this world. God will take care yes, sir. of those that's in his lineage. Yeah. Because it was a terrible time because Pharaoh was the king. Boy. But all he was, he was an earthly king. Yeah. Now there's another one who is king of kings. Yeah. And he is... <laughs> The Lord of Lords. Oh, yeah. Now let's get back to our scripture on today. Yeah. It, it tells us uh, about a virgin girl by the name of Mary. And it tells us what city yeah. that Mary resided in. Yeah. And the scripture tells us that it was a place called Nazareth. Oh, yeah. Galilee yes, sir. of Nazareth. And before I get any deeper into that city, I, I want to run real quickly over to John 1 and 46. Yeah. And 1, 40, John 1 and 46, a conversation was going on one day. Yeah. And, and one of the disciples by the name of Nathaniel, yes. he asked a question concerning uh, this city yeah. where uh, this little virgin was born. Oh, yeah. And the question was this, can anything good Come out of Nazareth. Yeah. Uh, that's the question was asked. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad thing when we label people because of the neighborhood where they are raised. Oh, yeah. We might label them, yes, sir. but there's one that's sitting high yeah. and one that's looking low. And it's not about what man thinks about nobody. Well, well. It's about what God thinks. Now, it also had been prophesied in Isaiah 7 and 14. Oh, yeah. 700 years before the lesson that we own yeah. today. Isaiah made a prophecy. Sure did. About 700 years before this took place. And this is what Isaiah had to say. He said, Behold, yeah. a virgin shall conceive yeah. and bear a son. Oh, yeah. And his name shall be called Emmanuel. Oh, yeah. And Emmanuel means this is God is with us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And keep in mind, God had shut himself off from the human race for yeah. over 400 years. Yeah. But I said, prophesy one day yeah. 
God's going to open things back up. Yeah. And God will yeah. be with his son. And my brother and my sister, that's doing the dispensation of the church. And it's good news to know, regardless of how bad this situation gets, God is going to always be with his church. Mary, this virgin that's going to give birth to the Savior of the world. Now this God that we serve. Let me do a little theological talking at this time. God could have chose a rich virgin from a high from a high class neighborhood. God could have chose a virgin from the scribe family. Yes, sir. He could have well, right. chose a virgin from the Sadducees yeah. family. Yeah. He could have yeah. chose a virgin from the Pharisees family. Well, yeah. These are the so-called high-ranking families. Yeah. High-ranking in whose sight? Because when God made a choice, yes, sir. he bears, bypassed the scribes, yeah. bypassed the Sadducees, yeah. bypassed the Pharisees. Well, well. If there was a such thing as a middle class, All right. he bypassed the middle class. Yeah. And I'm sure there were some virgins in every class of people. But the great God that we serve, oh, yeah. thank God uh, that he don't think all right. the way we think. Yeah. Thank God yeah. that his ways are not like our ways. Yeah. All right. All right. Because the world wanted to be the Savior to be born yes, in a royal family. But when God did the choosing, yes, God chose a virgin by the standards of man. Oh, yeah. She was uh, of the lowest class. Yeah. Right. When you think about how people think, yeah. how low yeah. was that class oh, yeah. of people that yeah. Jesus' mother is going to come from. If you would put a name on it during our time, oh, yeah. she would be coming out of the ghetto. Yeah. That's how men think. Yeah. But thank God we serve a God. And the God that we serve, there he is. Yes, sir. There he is. There, is. there he is. No respect. To God, yes, sir. we all are the same. Yeah. This earthly mother of the Savior of this world, oh, yeah. coming from the standards of our standards, oh, yeah. she would have been what they call a ghetto girl. Oh, yeah. But regardless of whatever state we find ourselves in, we need to learn yeah. Yeah. how to be content yes, sir. and thank God that I am yeah. what I am. Yeah. Yeah. It might not come up to nobody else's standard, yeah. but if God woke you up this morning, oh, yeah. you ought to just thank God for another day thank and that you never seen and another day you will never see again. Jesus did not enter in this world from no royal family by man's standard. Thank God for the God that we serve. And the God that we serve sent an angel arrived in Nazareth, came 
to a virgin girl. And this is what his words were unto this virgin girl. Mary. 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 Thou art highly favored. That's remarkable. Yeah. To come from an angel to someone that's considered a ghetto girl. Yeah. Mary, Mary, you are highly favored. Again, that's remarkable. And that's not only the only thing that the angel said. Yeah. The Lord yeah. also yeah. is with thee. With I'd rather yeah. that the Lord be with me yeah. than to have abundance of silver an abundance of gold. Yeah. The angel is not just finished telling her that she highly favored right. and telling her that if the Lord is with her, right. the angel also yes, told Mary, Mary, yeah. Mary, yeah. Mary, yeah. out of all of the women, down here on this earth, yeah. Mary, yeah. you are blessed, yes, blessed, yes. blessed yes. among women, yeah. has honor from heaven Boy. to this so-called, by our standard, a ghetto girl. Boy. In verse 30, this angel words are, fear not, Mary. Thou have found favor with God. Yeah. Every now and then, yes, sir. we're to find out what is our status oh, yeah. with God. Yes, sir. Mary, according to the angel, oh, yeah. found favor with God. Somebody ought to ask the question. Yes, sir. Oh, what was the favor what that she found with God? With God, yes, <coughs> it was not where she was staying, but it was about how yeah, right. she was living regardless of what she was staying. Oh, yeah. God knows, he knows how every one of us live, yeah, yeah. and he knows how we live every day. Thank God for Mother Webster. I heard him say one day oh, yeah. that the God we serve, he's always looking yeah. and he's always booking. Yeah. He had a record oh, yeah. on this girl. Yes, sir. And the record indicated that she was in good standing with God. Well, well. That is good news. Dear shall feel. 700 years of prophecy because thou shalt conceive what Isaiah talked about. Thou shalt bring forth a son. God knows everything and God is always in full control. And just like Elizabeth and Zachariah dealing with Mary and with Joseph, I will give you this son down here on this world. But one privilege you will not have, and that's to put a name on that child. We know that this young virgin girl was engaged to be married. Marriage was serious. During those days, marriage, during those days, if you got engaged, the only way you could break the engagement is through a legal procedure. It's not like we are doing today. Get engaged today, break it off tomorrow. Get married today, break up tomorrow. But during those days, yes, it was a serious matter. Yes. God yes, don't like stuff 
that's going on in the times that we're living in. But this young lady, during this period that the angel came to visit her, should have been some of the happiest days of her life. Engaged to be married with a man that undoubtedly she loved. She was supposed to be the happiest lady in the land during this time, making preparation to get married with the love of her life. But something showed up, changes had to be made. Angel showed up, and this angel told Mary that God has found favor with you. And it's for your husband, Joseph. You're going to have to make some decision who's number one in your life. Is Joseph going to be number one? Or is your maker and your creator going to be number one in your life? Thank God. Thank God for the decision that she made. Let Joseph know, Joseph, Joseph, thank God, it was Joseph that she was talking to, how could you handle a situation like this, engaged to be married, never slept, with a woman, call you off to the side, hear you, I'm carrying a baby inside of me. This is what this young lady was caught up in at this time. Thank God, thank God. God knew something about this virgin. God knew what kind of heart she had. God knew what he was doing. God knows who he can depend on. She told Joseph, Joseph was making plans to put her away secretly. Women, Never have no fear in what God can do if you just trust in him. God will fix any situation, not only with the women, but with us men too. There's no situation that you can get yourself in doing God's business that God can't fix the situation. A terrible thing. So tell this to Joseph, but God had a way to get to this man. Send Gabriel to him, told him, don't worry about that child that she's carrying. This is, this is, this is a child of the Holy Ghost. You are, you are blessed by the Most High God. Thank God. Thank God. He knows how to fix our problems. The angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come up on her. The highest God with all the power. And but this thing which she shall bear shall be called the Son of the Most High God. And when come time to name it, God will do the naming. The name will be this, Jesus, meaning God. God will. God will. God will. He will save. That name Jesus, the 
the savior of the world, the one that's carrying God's plan of salvation with our great God. Nothing is impossible. This story that we just shared, this is the truth about the birth of God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of this world, came to a young girl, a low estate, but this young girl, her words were to the angel concerning God, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing but a maid of a low estate. I know the class of people that they put me in. I know about the city of Galilee. This young lady didn't worry about these things. She was placed in an embarrassing situation. She was placed in a difficult position, engaged to be married, had to inform this man that she was with a child who never had a sexual activity with her. Thank God, during this time, if the word had got out, what had happened to her, they called this adultery. Yeah. And the penalty yeah. for adultery was punished yeah. by the stoning gotcha. of the to unto death. Yeah. But this young virgin totally, totally yeah. submitted to the will of God. Yeah. Her word yeah. was something like this. Here I am. My God, here I am, my maker, here I am, my creator. What you ask me, I do it according to your will. I do it according to your word. Through Mary, the virgin birth. She was Jesus' mother. Jesus was her God. This is the true story. Fulfilling the scriptures about in the beginning. Before there was a marriage, there also was Jesus. But God, through his miraculous, miraculous baby, this is his way of bringing his son into the world. Yeah. Yeah. He's the God yeah. of the mother. Yeah. Joseph just had the top. Yeah. But God, yeah. the father. Yeah. God, yeah. the son. Yeah. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. God oh. finds Mary. To do his work over 2,023 years ago. My brother and my sister, the question is in 2023, December the 17th, 2023, if an angel showed up. Face to face with you and with God. Uh -huh. Can it report me the same that you're highly favored 
with the Lord. That you are blessed by the Lord. Can God, can heaven call in to our dwelling place and say unto us, by the blood of Jesus, you're highly favored. I'm not talking about the word, yeah. but you're highly favored in my sight. Can the Lord tell me because of the way you're living that the Lord is with thee. Can the angel bring me a report and tell me you're blessed among men and women? Bottom line, God is still looking for an individual that when he calls on you and he calls on us is part of his church family where we have the same attitude that she has. Whoever is in our life, when we put them in second place to do the will of God, Lord, here I am. Use me, Lord, to do your will. Use me, Lord, to do your will. Brothers, my sister, let's keep a check on our spirit. God is still looking for the people that's highly favored by him. In the close, the year of 2023, let's get the church in this city together. And let's stay close to him. He's still looking for someone. Someone that is not Lord about my will for my sake. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, the first thing that you must do, the very first thing you must do, deny yourself. Take up that cross. Follow me on daily basis. You will find just as God blessed this man. Who would have ever thought God would go to the ghetto to find someone, a theological conclusion of this, when God let me know, think me about it. to the ghetto. All right. He went to the lowest class person and he found somebody yeah. that was ready yeah. to do whatever yeah. your will. Yeah. Look for me. We live in the time, you all, the reason the world and America is in the shape that she's in yeah. is no longer about God. It's a blessing. Money, riches, and wealth. We all want to be financially secure. But the number one thing is to be highly favored with the Lord. And if God could find somebody in the ghetto that he could depend on to be highly favored, I don't think none of us are going to get over this.
Amen.